This man was like a, uh, uh, he's like a walking Geico commercial, right? <laughs> Scoop, there it is. Scoop, there it is. Scoop, there it is. Scoop, on, there it man. is. Shaka laka. Right Everybody. Here. If I'm not mistaken, he's Pull already point. in Cleveland, Ohio, as part of the NFL Network draft coverage. Ian Rappaport, how are you? Ian? What's going on, Rich? How are you? Uh-huh. I am currently sitting at what we call the garage set. Okay. I'm not sitting in my own seat, so it's got like, uh, we got a big desk for a lot of people with a lot of space <laughs> in between. And then I, on the other side of this thing, got a little chair for myself. So I'm sitting probably in your seat, if okay. being honest. All right, keep it warm. Um, keep it warm. And that's where I'll be ready to roll. I appreciate that. It's exciting, huh? The draft in person. Like, oh. uh, this is, you don't, you know, I, we've never taken it for granted. But the fact that, uh, you know, last year was done remotely and here we go back at a draft site. You're already feeling what I guess I'll be feeling once I arrive there, middle of the week. So cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the draft is always, like, you know, people will say to me before free agency, they'll say, like, oh, man, aren't you excited? Like, no, I'm not excited. Free agency is terrible. I mean, it's great when, <laughs> you know, you break big stories, but there's so many of them that, like, it's in, free agency is like insanity. It's like a carnival, right? The draft is my favorite thing that we do by far. I love it so much, and I've always loved it, but I must say getting here, getting to do it in person again, I'm literally looking at the stage right now. Uh, the Browns are on the clock for some reason. I think that's the, the screens and boards. Sure. Um, it's an amazing thing. I'm so excited. Ian Rappaport already at the draft site, joining us here live on the Rich Eisen Show the Monday, three days until the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars are, are going to be put on the clock. Let's get to some of the reports that you've had in the last 24 hours. I still can't believe that the 49ers are grinding tape, uh, that they made this maneuver without, you know, for sure taking somebody, unless Mac Jones was that for taking, for sure taking somebody and Trey Lance has suddenly, um, you know, gotten their attention. Walk us through your report that uh, that uh, the Niners quarterback search at three overall is down to two prospects, Mac Jones and Trey Lance, Ian. Yeah, uh, so this is, as you mentioned, something I reported last night. And I think something that people have sort of surmised, like I kind of assumed that people knew last week, um, but it sounds like the 49ers kind of really finalized this probably on Friday. And it's like, all right, you know, they love Justin Fields, but he is, from what I understand, not someone they're considering at three. And then it's Mac Jones and then it's Trey Lance. Two extremely different prospects literally could not be more different. Um, I don't know that they are grinding tape right now. Like, I don't, I don't think that's what it is. And I know everyone sort of laughed and got, a, got like a you know, good little chuckle out of the fact that the 49ers don't know I firmly believe they have not 100% finalized. Do they have an idea? Absolutely. But, you know, you want to make sure in your building that if you're going to draft a franchise quarterback, and they obviously are going to try to, that everyone's on board. You want, to, you want everyone to be convinced. So I think that is actually what's going on now is trying to build a consensus in the building. They've gotten a lot of information on Mac Jones. They've gotten a lot of information on Trey Lance. They've been in touch with the people training them. They've been in touch with their coaches. Um, they've watched them do the things that the 49ers do on the field. Um, there's a lot going on here more than just watching tape. Huh. So why not Justin Fields? What have you heard about the fact that he's been eliminated, if you will, from the consideration in San Francisco? Yeah, I, I would say – and this is something that I'm sort of like having trouble answering or coming to grips with because it's not that they don't like Justin Fields. And what, you know, truly I've talked to many, many teams that have Justin Fields as the number three prospect when it comes to quarterback. But a lot of teams, I would say most teams actually have Justin Fields as the three. So it doesn't mean he's falling. It just means, you know, when you're talking about Kyle Shanahan's offense, they want someone to be able to engineer it and run it like Kyle wants. Um, Mac Jones has a beautiful mind, as they say. He is extremely smart. Trey Lance, extremely smart. I'm not saying that Justin Fields is not at all because he had got very good grades and is also smart. But on the field, you know, it's all a projection, but we did not see Fields go through his progressions like the others. Um, that is my best guess as to why not Fields. But I don't take this to mean that Fields is falling. It's just probably not going to be with this particular team. Ian Rappaport here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Falcons fans, you got them all freaked out. I'll be honest with you, uh, Ian. 
uh, with your report that uh, teams are realizing how cap strung the Falcons uh, are and how Julio Jones um, could be the talent that uh, is a cap casualty with the Falcons in terms of an acquisition. Um, walk us through what you reported, how Jones teams are calling the Falcons for him. And, you know, is it possible that the Falcons either make a move at quarterback and then tell Matt Ryan, you have a small window of opportunity still now to be the starter here, but you don't have Jones or, or, or what? like, what is the plan with Atlanta right now? Yeah, I would say quarterback is a possibility for Atlanta. Most of the other GMs or coaches that I speak with believe the Falcons are going with Kyle Pitts. That doesn't mean it's going to happen. That is just what, what people believe. I am sort of more in the thought of quarterback for them just because, you know, hopefully you're never up at four again and, like, it's a rare opportunity to get a franchise quarterback when your starting quarterback is 35 years old. Um, but as far as the, you know, the Julio thing, I'm not sure I fully realized how bad the Falcons cap situation was until like, so I found this out last night. Uh, and then I kind of spent last night verifying it. And I was like, all right, I'll put it out when I get up this morning. Um, and really they are, they need to make some moves just to sign their draft picks. Like they are in horrible shape. And I think that Julio contract, you know, for him, it's a great contract, but it's one of the worst contracts I've ever seen for a team. It is, absolutely brutal, hamstrings them. So, yeah, teams are calling. They're not going to give them away. It's going to have to be a lot. We're talking about future picks, so not a pick in this coming draft. But it seems for the right price the Falcons would be open to it. Um, so I think there's a chance it gets dealt. So that's what I was saying is, that, you know, I was talking at the top about the mechanics of this. It, it can't be like an NBA trade where, you know, Jones is traded, they get the picks in this year's draft, and then the trade is executed on June 1st for cap yeah. reasons. You cannot do that, right? Cannot, cannot do that. But they can do everything else. So they can do – because, you know, theoretically, like, God forbid something terrible happens to Julio or he decides to retire or whatever it is. Um, you know, if something bad happens to him, what do you do with the trade if, if the picks were already used, Right. So I think what it is, is you would agree to a trade. You would not execute it, but you'd have all the paperwork from the league. You would use it, do it for next year's draft picks. And then on June 2nd, you would execute the trade. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I was like, well, how could you do that? But then literally the same thing basically happened in January, right? I mean, Matthew Stafford and Goff could trade it. Then, like, in the middle of March, we go, oh, the trade's official, right? Right. So that's what we, that would be the plan. Oh my gosh! So you're. But, I know it's you, crazy. I, I I mean I. So like when I found this out last night, it took me a really like a little bit of time to be like, right? Well, hang on, like this really could happen, and it really could happen. But you think that the Falcons are going to go fourth overall, quarterback? But most of the people that you're talking to in the league think it's Kyle Pitts. And yeah. thus, to get everyone signed, they might have to get rid of Jones, and Pitts could be like the guy that replaces Julio instead of giving Matt Ryan all the weapons he needs yeah. to actually win in the window of opportunity he has left. Yeah, and, you know, I think one thing that's weird here is, you know, again, I don't know if Julio's going to get traded, but the value's never quite what people think, right? So you have a 32-year-old player who barely played last year, He's insanely expensive. Like, yes, he's Julio Jones, but he also has struggled to stay on the field. Um, so the value, is, it's, hard, it's hard to come up with the right value. You could do it, but these are very difficult trades to imagine. Um, but, yes, to answer your question, I think Pitts would basically replace Julio. Ian Rappaport joining us from the NFL Network, one of the three draft sets in Cleveland, Ohio, right here on the Monday of NFL Draft Week on the Rich Eisen Show. And what the Falcons do it for, Ian, is so fascinating, not only because of what it means for the Falcons, but what it also means for the rest of the top ten. Because if the Falcons do take Kyle Pitts, as you say, most of the evaluators in the NFL and decision makers in the NFL that you talk to think that's what they're going to do. That means two quarterbacks still remaining in first-round grade territory are still remaining on the draft board from five on down, and we're assuming the Bengals don't take one of them at five. So that would be kind of a bonanza scenario for anybody that wants to take one in the top 10 as they currently are sitting right there. 
and uh, or for anybody to trade in. What are you hearing about what he, our, our colleague Tom Pelissero is talking about with the Patriots knocking on the door of the top ten to see about trading in? What are you hearing about that possibility? Yeah, I believe that is accurate. Um, and, you know, they're, they're always a team to watch uh, with the Patriots. I mean, one thing we've, met, we've seen in free agency is – for everything we assumed about Bill Belichick, we really don't know anything, right? Like, they went on a wild spending spree in free agency, and that's never the Patriots' way at all. Um, so everyone says, you know, Belichick won't mortgage the future to trade up. Are we sure? Like, Dave Ziegler, who, is, who took over for Nick Cacero as a de facto GM, um, has, I think, brought a little bit of a more open mind in this, I would say, to New England. They're considering a lot of things. So could they trade up to 11? Could the Patriots trade up for a quarterback and have Dave Gettleman for the first time in his life trade out? All of that is possible, according to me. So what about getting into the top ten, though? Are, 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 and in, in terms of that, I mean, this is all connected. Are, are the Carolina Panthers really telling everybody, um, I'm hearing it too, that they're, they would absolutely take a quarterback eighth overall? Yes. Or... or, or Okay, so that's a yes. So, do you believe it, or is 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 the fact that they didn't sign, you know, pick up Sam Donald's fifth year option just yet, sort of like a head fake that if you want a quarterback that's dropping, uh, we might take him at eight. So you better come up here and go get him. I mean, is that entire or 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 they really mean it? Like they they are gonna get two quarterbacks age twenty three and younger and go for it that way, like for real. The answer to your question, Rich, is yes. To all of your questions, the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> yes, they really like one quarterback. My sense, sense is that Fields would be the guy, also because I think he would be there. So they definitely like a quarterback, unless they want everyone to know that they definitely like a quarterback. So the Broncos trade up over them, and maybe the Broncos trade up for Justin Fields. So one of those things is true. I just don't know which. And I think that's what's really fun about the draft. And they both could be true. They could like Justin Fields enough and would take him except if someone else gave them an offer they could refuse to trade up. So um, it's still a lot. There's a lot of intrigue just specifically with the Carolina Panthers love the quarterbacks. No, I, and I know that, you know, the owner of the, of the Panthers, David Tepper, is from the world of, you know, finance and, you know, you gotta you gotta spend money to make money and stuff like that. And I, and I know that you know they didn't give up the farm for Sam Darnold, but a two four and a six over two years isn't you know you you can't just go throwing those around you know on, on a let's on a one year look see you know what I mean? It's a, that one yeah. just doesn't make any sense to me. Like so you you do all that to go get Darnold and you have an introductory press conference, and then uh, you know suddenly we like Trey Lance better. Like you're turning like suddenly you know. Uh, the kid from USC is a UCLA kid named Rosen, and they don't even take a year to do it. Like, that makes no sense to me to do all that. Yeah. I would say, so Scott Fitterer, the general manager there, came from Seattle. And Seattle has one of the best quarterback situations, well, just before this offseason, but right. had one of the best quarterback situations in the NFL with Russell Wilson. And to get to Russell Wilson in the third round, they signed Matt Flynn, they signed Tavares Jackson, um, they traded for someone, Charlie Whitehurst, maybe. I'm, I'm forgetting the time. But anyway, they took at least three swings at quarterback before they landed on Russell Wilson. I would not be surprised if Carolina did the same thing. So, yes, they have Sam Donald. Are they set with Sam Donald, the quarterback, as definitely their starter? I would not say that. They are going to keep doing things to make sure they have options at quarterback until they just find the right one. So, you know, whenever people ask about the price of moving up or the price of paying a quarterback or whatever it is, I would say the same thing. It really doesn't matter because if you have your franchise quarterback, it's worth literally whatever you paid for it. And I would say for the Panthers, it's worth whatever they want to give up as long as they eventually get their back. Before I let you go, Ian, um, you know, with all the scoops that you have and then all the news that keeps breaking about the draft that's three days away, um, it's almost as if that Orlando Brown acquisition by Kansas City – um, that happened on Friday, you know, happened like three weeks ago. But I know exactly when God, the Chiefs-Ravens trade happened because it was the exact second I said goodbye on Friday's show at 3 Eastern time. So why would the Ravens send away a protector of Lamar Jackson for 
uh, essentially what's a second round pick, you know, and others. What 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 happened there with the Ravens and the Chiefs? Um, so this, it's really a crazy, fascinating situation. Orlando Brown made a promise to his late father that he would play left tackle. And that is what he wants to do. And, you know, we could talk about left tackles making more money. True, although right tackles make plenty. We could talk about all the different things. But when you make a promise to your late father, that's hard to trump, right? Um, And Orlando Brown wanted to play left tackle. Ronnie Stanley is an all-pro and one of the best left tackles in the NFL. He's coming back. And I think everybody sort of forgets that, right? Like, the Ravens didn't trade a left tackle. They traded their right tackle. So they traded their right tackle for basically a second-round pick. And I think they think that's something that's replaceable. And the value is pretty good. And if you're the Chiefs and you've got a blindside protected for Patrick Mahomes so he doesn't have to run around for his life, um, that's a trade that makes sense for both sides. I really like the move. I thought it was very clever. And I sort of applaud both of them for having the, um, what did you say, the stones yes. to deal to a rival. And is it entirely possible that the – Chiefs can get Eric Fisher back too when he's healthy or shows that he can actually return? I mean, is it possible? I believe that ship has sailed. Okay, that ship has sailed. Um, and do we know if uh, Duvernay Tardif is going to come back to the team after spending the year in his uh, home uh, nation of Canada fighting COVID-19 on the front lines in a Montreal uh, hospital? Is that possible from what you're we, hearing too? We think he is. Um, but I would just say... I. I don't know. It's, it's sort of weird to say because he was doing something so, so, so far more important. Um, I would say he will have to make sure his roster spot is secure. You know what I mean? Like, he's an older guy. He's making some money. He hadn't played in a year. Nothing's more important than Patrick Mahomes. So even though it's a, like an awesome, feel-good story, I, think, I still think he will have to make the team. All right, before I let you go, Ian, it's always interesting when the Dallas Cowboys are on the clock. Uh, I know that uh, Jerry Jones is the only one who really knows what's going on along with Steven, and he is. it's already been established. He's even said it on the show that you never know what's in his head only until yeah. he says it. We know that. That was, I think, the Earl Thomas story, I believe, from uh, a while ago. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. So let's put it all together, and what do you think the Cowboys are going to do at 10 with his infatuation, Jerry's? with Kyle Pitts. What do they do at 10 on Thursday night? Um, what do you got? I, and I have to run. I have to give a quick answer and run after this. Um, I I believe they will either stay and pick a corner or trade back. I think they are more likely to trade back than not. And if a team, let's say the Patriots, wants to trade up, um, I think that would be a really good spot to do it. Um so that is my guess, corner or trade back to the Cowboys. Ian, I'll see you in Ohio. Keep my seat nice and warm, will you please? I heard it's supposed <laughs> to rain and be a little chilly on Thursday, so let's do that. Okay? I, would, I would confirm that news. Thank Thanks, you. Rich. Thank Take care. You. Here you go. That's Ian Rappaport joining us from my chair at the NFL Draft. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.